And one of the biggest challenges the business owners experience is that they allow their outcomes or external circumstances to impact their internal state. They allow whatever's happening out there to impact how they feel about themselves, how they feel about their lives. And when you are allowing outcomes to impact how you feel about you, you are at the mercy of those outcomes. You are at the mercy of whatever it is that happens in your external reality. And when you move like that, it's difficult to create a business that's long lasting. It's difficult to create a business that brings you joy. It's difficult to create a business that lights you up. Hola, mis amores. How is your spirit today? So today I am very excited because we're going to be doing episode two of this self-trust mastery series that I've started, where we are unpacking what is required for us to live life on our own terms, fully prioritizing ourselves with ease and with flow and with calm. And we're going to be talking today about the most important type of self-care for business owners. If we are meeting for the first time, hola, my name is Jen Nori Pounsel. I am the co-founder of the Self-Trust Company and the co-creator of the Self-Trust System. I am an icon. I'm a living legend. I am gifted at living life on my own terms, and I desire the same thing for everybody because I know how powerful it is when you begin to dance in your zone of brilliance, um, when you begin to love life in a way that lights you up. So today, I want to walk you through the most important type of self-care for business owners so that you are able to master it with ease and you are able to lean into it so that it can support you. So here's the deal. Make sure you have your journal ready. Make sure you have your water bottle ready because we're staying hydrated and we're pulling all the nuggets that are coming up and putting them directly in our journal. When I started this process of prioritizing my self-care, It was 13 years ago. 13 years ago was when I began to give myself room to live the life that I truly desire. It's when I gave myself room to be open to co-creating something that I was I feel good about for me, not for nobody else. And in this journey that I've had to self-care, I've had many transformations. And the moments that have felt like a quote-unquote low still have been powerful moments that have supported my growth and have helped me move to the next level. So I'm in a place right now where my lowest lows are higher than my lowest highs used to be. And that means that where I am in my life right now is this place where I can enjoy my life, even in the moments that it stretches me, even the moments that it doesn't feel good. And this is a powerful skill to have as a business owner, because there are moments that are going to stretch you. There are moments that are not going to feel as fun. And in those moments, it's important that you're able to remain grounded and you are able to remain in alignment with who you say you are in the world because that's what helps you manifest more of the things you desire. So it's important that you understand that and you come into this conversation with that context because content without context, it doesn't make sense. It doesn't work and it's harder to implement. And when you have context, you are able to navigate the things you desire with way more fun and joy. So today I'm going to give you um, some context with this content so that he can support you. Can y'all see me clearly? It looks a little foggy on my end, but not be my glasses. So let's get into this content. If you're someone that is attracted to me, that means that you are familiar with self-care. That means that you have dabbled into different types of self-care. And there are different types of self-care. There is 
physical self-care. That's the care of your body. There's um, emotional self-care. There is spiritual self-care. There is all these different types of self-care that are present for us as leaders. And in the last 13 years I've been doing this, y'all, I've learned that out of the different types of self-care that are out there, and I'm pretty sure there are many, there could be an a bunch more that I didn't mention today. There is one type of self-care that matters the absolute most. One type. And when you focus on this type of self-care, I want you to know that everything in your life begins to change. When you focus on the type of self-care that I'm going to share with you in a minute, you begin to move differently. And when you move differently, your confidence also moves differently. And you are able to call in things that before may have felt may have felt out of reach. They begin to fall in your lap because when you focus the best type of self-care for you, everything turns around and it happens like this. So out of the different types of self-care that are out there, and I've done them all, I've been in this path for 13 years, and in those years, I have ran multiple marathons. That's actually what these medals are for. These are for some of the half marathons and marathons that I've ran in 5Ks um, back when I used to be a, a runner. This is actually a run that I did in a mountain. So I've, I'm all about the physical self-care. And I've also done things like um, journaling and self-reflecting for many years I've going to be celebrating eight years of meditation this year, of quieting myself. Um, I've done a lot of food self-care too. I've been a meal prep person. I used to actually work as a meal prep expert, helping leaders eat better and meal prep their food. So having been through this period for over a decade, there has been one specific type of self-care that in my experience completely takes the others above the above above the, the next level and that is a spiritual self care what do i mean when i say spiritual self care when i'm talking about spiritual self care i am referring to where you're getting your guidance from i am referring to you leaning into your inner voice what i call the voice of god within and allowing that voice that gut feeling how many of you are familiar with the gut feeling Raise your hand if you ever had that feeling that said, hey, go this way or don't go that way or say yes to this or say no to this. If you've had those feelings before, that is your inner voice. That is the voice of God within you. And I've learned that when we are cultivating our spiritual self-care practice as business owners, we are able to call in what we desire with way more fun, more calm, and more ease. Why is that? That is because you, as a business owner, are creating, co-creating with your business. So whatever energy you have, you're going to call that same energy in. And when you cultivate your spiritual self-care practice, you put yourself in a position where you are calling in only what's most aligned with your spirit. You are calling in only what lights you up the most. And this is the power of having a spiritual self-care practice is that you are able to ground yourself in the very thing that you desire the most, in the thing that lights you up, in the thing that feels exciting to you, and you create from that place. When you have a business, you guys, this is more important than ever. Because when you are a business owner, you are being pulled in different directions. You have clients. They have their own questions, their own asks. You have your family. You have your friends. You may have people that you manage, people that you support, people that are part of your own support team in your business. You may also have other responsibilities like being a spouse, being a partner. You may have business partners. When you are a leader, You are constantly being pulled in all these different directions and you are being invited into balancing all these different pieces at the same time, allowing yourself to coexist in this growth process. 
So it's important that your spiritual practice, your spiritual self-care is locked in because when you are a business owner, there are more voices that can be coming into your life. There are more people that have opinions around what you should do and what you shouldn't do and how you should do it or how you shouldn't do it. And it's important that in that moment, you are able to ground yourself on the voice that truly matters, the voice that's responsible for whatever comes out of this, the voice that's going to face the consequences of your actions And that is your voice. That is being able to listen to your inner guidance. That is being able to listen to your intuition. And I believe in this so strongly. I believe in the power of having a spiritual self-care practice that is so ruthless for you because I've seen it in my life and I've seen it transform the lives of the people that I work with. There is nothing like being able to know your values, being able to honor those values, being able to be the boundary. Because there's a difference between doing boundaries and being boundaries. When we are doing boundaries, we are upset because people call us after we said, don't call me at this time. When we are being the boundary, we don't answer the phone. When people call outside times, we say we don't want to talk. You see the difference? And having a spiritual self-care practice puts you in a really strong position to call in the things that you want. And that's the number one thing I want you to walk away from today's video. I want you to write this down. Having a spiritual self-care practice is critical as a business owner. It's critical for you as a leader because you are at the center of it all. And when you are not grounded in what matters to you the most, it can feel very challenging. It can feel very overwhelming to navigate life as a leader when you're being pulled in all these directions. So I want to talk to you a little bit about how to master this process, how to master having a a spiritual self-care practice, because it can have a very woo-woo feel to it. And while I'm all about that, I come from a very spiritual family. Like my mother has been a healer in our community for over 30, 40 years. There is a practical side to this. There is a practical side to cultivating your spiritual self-care because it's that important. And I have been spending, I've invested the last decade of my life to this. I can share with you what that is like so that you are available to the process when it starts unfolding. So the first thing I want you to know is that building a self-care practice, especially a spiritual self-care practice, is about going on a journey. And this is a very fun journey to go on because it's a journey that you are deciding to go on for your own life, for your own well-being. That is the journey that we are on, this journey of putting ourselves first and prioritizing our spiritual self-care. There are four stages that we experience in this journey. And today I want to walk you through those stages so that you can be familiar with them. And the next time you find yourself in any of these stages, you have full clarity and a knowing about what's going on so that you can remain focused on yourself and not in the outcomes that are arising out of your decisions. Okay? So the first stage that we all experience when we are creating and nurturing and prioritizing our spiritual self-care is a discovery. We begin with a discovery stage. And the discovery stage is so beautiful. You want to think of the discovery stage. You want to remember when you first started working out, when you first started eating a little bit better. When you first started your morning routine, what was that like? You went through a process of discovering. You started to notice, oh, I like this. Oh, I don't like this. Oh, here's how I am when I show up with this. When I started running, I realized that I was the type of runner that wanted to PR, wanted to always uh, put out a, 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 
a personal record, right? I noticed that I was up a runner that didn't really like running with people that were slower than me because I like to use people to pace myself up. So the first stage of any self-care practice, any self-care routine is discovering. That is the first stage that you're going to find yourself in. In the discover stage, it's powerful because you learn, you learn what you like and you learn what you don't like. And then you enter the second stage of this self-care process. And the second stage is a shedding stage. The shedding stage is really important because you may notice that once you figure out what you like, now it's time to start to release the things you don't like. This process, you're familiar with it. You may have experienced it in other areas of your life where you first discover what you like, especially as a business owner. You first were discovering what kind of business do I want to launch? What kind of clients do I want to work with? What kind of problem do I decide to address? And then you started to realize where these are things I don't want to focus on. These are things I want to leave here. So you enter your shedding stage. That is our second stage. We start to shed. We start to release things that don't serve us. When it comes to our spiritual practice, here's where we begin to pay attention to what are those boundaries. Here's where we begin to pay attention to how are we acting versus how we think we're acting. Here's where we begin to notice what are those expectations that people have of us that we have been quote unquote, trying to meet while at the same time, honor ourselves and prioritize what we desire. You begin to notice that you are, you've been trying to live a double life and it's time to start to shed one of those lives because you can only focus on one thing at a time. The third stage that we experience So we first discover who we want to be. We discover our higher self. We discover what we want to create. And then we go into shedding the things we don't like, shedding the parts of us that isn't aligned, shedding the parts of us that we don't desire to move forward with. And then we we enter the embodying stage. We begin to show up like the person we say we are. For those of us that are in business, What begins to happen in this stage is you are being the type of business owner you want to be. You begin to prioritize yourself. You begin to say yes to the clients that light you up and say no to the clients that don't. You begin to create a flow for yourself and you start to feel like you are moving with it and everything is starting to bear fruit. You begin to enjoy the fruits of your labor. And this is a really exciting stage you guys, because when you are in the embodying stage, you are full on action. You are being who you say you are and you're doing it with joy and with compassion and with kindness. You are being this version of yourself and you are allowing this version of yourself to flourish. Spiritually speaking, what begins to happen in this stage, we look in a lot of our routines. When we are in the embodying stage, we're looking at our routines because our routines are the ones that help us be that version of ourselves we desire to be. Our routines are the ones that reveal to us how we're acting versus how we think we're acting so we can decide how we want to act instead. And when it comes to your spiritual self-care, nurturing your routines is a very important piece of the puzzle. Because he helps you create space with ease for you so that you can be available to the things that light you up. Now, the fourth stage that we experience is the mastery stage. And this is a very powerful stage because in this stage, everything is going great. You feel like you vibing, you feel like your your business is vibing, you're getting clients, everything is going awesome. And you begin to then be so in flow with where you are that you release any care, any Fs for what, what people think and how people they feel about you. You are so focused on who you are being in the world and how good that feels to you that you are not worried about what other people are doing. You stop to keep stop caring. You let it go. And then the cycle begins all over again because you find new things that light you up. And those things that light you up put you back in that same cycle of transformation. And this is what I call my clients the four stages of self trust because 
they are able to move through those stages. They are able to see themselves in those particular stages. And it's their responsibility to choose to trust themselves in this process so that they can discover the gems that are there for them. So they can discover the highest self of themselves. So they can then go and shed anything that is not aligned with this version of themselves that they want to embody. And then they can start embodying that version of themselves with greater ease and flow by nurturing their routines and their rituals and get to that place where they are enjoying mastery by letting go of any care of what people may think and focusing only on the things they can control. This is what goes into cultivating, nurturing a spiritual self-care practice. In prioritizing this is very important because you're going to find yourself at different moments of your life in one of these stages. You are either going to be discovering the highest version of you. You are going to be shedding parts of you that are no longer aligned. You are going to be embodying the parts of you that do align, amplifying more of that, or you are going to be letting go of other people's uh, of high of you're going to be letting go of the care about what people think about you and fully stepping into your next level with complete ownership. This is the process that we're in. When it comes to self care, this is the process that we're currently experiencing. We are going from discovering our, ourselves to shedding ourselves to embodying who we say we are and to mastering by letting go and taking ourselves in that process over and over again. Does that make sense? Do you guys have any questions on that? I'm looking at my window and there's a huge cloud, which tells me it's going to rain and it's about to come down. So it's important that you have this context because with this context, you can then be intentional about paying close attention to where you are in your life and seeing how that impacts your business. If you are someone that is in the discovery stage in your own spiritual self-care, in prioritizing your spiritual self-care, this is a season for you to pay close attention to what are the things that are lighting you up. And paying attention means that you may discover that your business has shifted and that the things that were lighting you up before are not lighting you up right now. And then that creates a pathway for you to enter your shedding stage, for you to start letting go of those things that aren't aligned with you, listening to that intuitive voice within, allowing that intuitive voice to lead your path and taking action on it. Letting go of those expectations that people have of you. Letting go of that desire for external validation. Letting go of the addiction to listen to the outer world instead of listening to the inner being. And when we are able to shed and move through that piece, we can then start to embody the version of ourselves that actually lights us up, the parts of ourselves that bring us joy, the parts of ourselves that has fun. Because too many of us be having businesses with an attitude and we want you to have fun. I want you to have fun in your business because then your vibration helps elevate the vibration of the collective. And when we are embodying, when we are nurturing our routines and our rituals, then we hold space to let go, to master ourselves, to be in a position where we're not caring what people think about us. Because that's the biggest challenge that we experience in that mastery stage is letting go of what people think about us and allowing ourselves to be who we are with kindness and compassion and love. And this is why. Spiritual self care is the most important type of self care for business owners. Because when you are grounded in your spiritual self, when you are caring for yourself, when you are prioritizing listening to your intuition, when you are prioritizing acting on your intuition, when you are prioritizing shedding what doesn't align, when you are prioritizing letting go of what you cannot control. 
things begin to open up for you. You are able to remain grounded when things come up, whether being people talking about you, whether it being your your intuition telling you to do something different and stepping into the unknown, whether it being um, completely blowing up your business and looking at it from a completely different perspective, whether it being choosing to do different things. When you are able to have a spiritual practice, a spiritual self-care practice where you are grounded, None of these things that happen externally shake your internal state. And one of the biggest challenges that business owners experience is that they allow their outcomes or external circumstances to impact their internal state. They allow whatever's happening out there to impact how they feel about themselves, how they feel about their lives. And when you are allowing outcomes to impact how you feel about you, you are at the mercy of those outcomes. You are at the mercy of whatever it is that happens in your external reality. And when you move like that, it's difficult to create a business that's long lasting. It's difficult to create a business that brings you joy. It's difficult to create a business that lights you up. The most important thing I've done in my life, this is not even just in business, y'all. This is in my life has been to prioritize my spiritual self-care. It has been to be in a place where I am grounded spiritually. And I don't look at spiritual self-care from only a one dimension. To me, a spiritual self-care is about doing three things. It's about expanding my awareness. It's about focusing my attention with intention. It's about owning my autonomy. When I look at those things deeper, It's about knowing where I am in this journey. Am I discovering myself right now? Am I shedding parts of me that aren't aligned? Am I embodying who I say I am right now? Am I letting go of the things I can't control? Am I mastering it? What part of the process am I in? And then it's looking at how am I showing up, fully auditing myself? How am I acting versus how I think I'm acting versus how I desire to act? It's about looking at how am I making my decisions? Am I listening to the intuition? Is that what I lean on when I make my decision? Where am I getting my leadership from? It's looking at how am I reacting when I, how am I responding when I find myself reacting? What does that shift look like for me? It's looking at how do I give myself grace? Because when you start to see yourself, you're going to notice some things you don't like. And then it's going to be important that you give yourself grace through that process because you are human. And part of the human condition is wanting to be perfect all the time. And then being available to being supported. Spiritual self-care also includes support. And I don't mean support just in the sense of people to talk to. I mean support to help you navigate through the stuff that's going to come up especially with your feelings, because most of us have created a habit of separating ourselves from experiencing our emotions out of fear of how we respond to our feelings. And our feelings are teachers. Your feelings tell you about your internal state so that you can choose a different internal state. And when you're not seeing it from that perspective and a feeling shows up that you are uncomfortable with, you run away from it. And when you run away from that feeling, you are also running away from the lesson that that feeling is here to teach you. To me, it's also about looking at what are my routines, what are my rituals, what are my systems? Because being spiritually led, being open to prioritizing your spiritual self-care It calls for you to look at it with the same level of strategy, with the same level of intention that you look at your business. And for me, I bring that same energy to me. I bring that same energy to myself. So I'm looking at what are the routines I'm cultivating. This year, one of the routines I'm really cultivating and nurturing is my rest routine. This is my rest week. This week, I have schedule additional time in my calendar to rest. All of yesterday, I was at the Miami Open 
watching tennis with my husband, unplugging, disconnecting, allowing my inner child to play. That's what I'm talking about. And because this year I'm deeply committed to my rest routine, every month I'm checking to make sure I am taking that week off. It's about being willing to be uncomfortable by design. This is really important because people don't like to be uncomfortable. Even when I began this journey for myself, like I associated quote unquote happiness with the absence of discomfort. I convinced myself that to be in a good place meant that I was never going to be uncomfortable. And what I've learned, 13 years I've been doing this, 13 years, I've learned that discomfort is not only part of the process, it is a necessary part of the process because discomfort helps us calibrate. Discomfort helps us see how we are showing up. If before discomfort showed up and you used to act in a certain way, when he shows up again, you get to show up differently. You get to be a higher version of you. That's what that means. And for me, knowing that, a big part of my spiritual self-care is being uncomfortable. So every day I do something that makes me uncomfortable or that brings up feelings of discomfort. For me specifically, and if you've seen any of my videos, you know what is the thing that I do. If you know it, drop it in the comments. For me, it's all about taking cold showers. I take cold showers every single morning, and I do this because it is a decision that I make to be more uncomfortable. It's a decision that I make to put myself in a situation where I am willing to be in an uncomfortable state for me. It's about letting go. So as I'm walking you through these things, I want you to see that it's not that complex. And I want you to see why it is important to have this comprehensive look at yourself because that's how you're able to navigate life with more ease and flow. That's how you're able to call in the money you want. That's how you're able to redirect at leisure and still always land on your feet. It's because it's here. It's all in here. I started this business in 2018. Before I did this business, I was a director of communications and I was doing really well. And I decided to leave that job. I was making what people consider good money. And the reason why I did that, it was because it wasn't lighting me up. I had the office. My office had a door. I had the title. I was helping run conferences. I had I started a podcast for them. I did so many things in this organization. And if I would have stayed there, I'm sure I would have done well but he wasn't lighting me up. I felt like I was putting myself through a slow decline being there. I had a view out of my apartment and I didn't really enjoy it because of all these things that were around me, right? And today, I I was sitting with this earlier. I've never loved the view of my life the way I love it right now. And it doesn't mean that I don't have uncomfortable things going on. It doesn't mean that things aren't stretching me. It doesn't mean that my family is not experiencing things that are part of the human experiencing experience. People are getting older. Things are p- popping up for different people. My parents need different things. Like I am very much still having a very real experience. And at the same time, I am deeply I am deeply in love with this life. How can that be? How can both of these things coexist? What has changed? Me. I'm the one that changed. And you must be the one to change also. And this is why I'm sharing this with you because when you have context, it's easier to shift. You are able to see how different things connect. And it's always easier to connect the dots when we look back. So for the business owner watching this, prioritize your spiritual self-care. 
prioritize quieting yourself so that you can listen to the inner being and release the outer world. Prioritize reflecting who you're being. Prioritize auditing yourself. Prioritize embodying your core values, embodying your aspirational values. Prioritize being the person you say you are. You won't always feel easeful. You won't always feel joyful. Once you are done with it, though, once you do it, you will feel relief. You will feel joy. You will feel calm. You feel excitement. You feel things that you didn't know were available to you before. And being a business owner right now, I'm I'm reflecting on a lot of these things, on what self-care has taught me and and looking at it from the context of my spiritual self-care has been, has changed my life. And it has given me such permission to do things that I never thought I could, and courage to step into arenas I didn't know I had it in me to step into. So I wanted to leave you with that. I want to leave you with an invitation to step up to yourself, to prioritize your spiritual self-care, to prioritize quieting yourself and listening to yourself and acting on what you're hearing and trusting that it's the best for you. Because when you do that, everything unfolds in your favor. Steve Jobs said it best. Listen to your intuition because he already knows where you want to go. And I couldn't agree more. Thank you for joining me today. It was a pleasure to have you. I'm sending you love. I'm sending you light. I'm sending you all the things as you experience this journey that we call life. Have an amazing rest of your day. Thank you for joining me and I will see you next time. Hasta luego. Mm-hmm.